Hendrik, thank you so much for being here today with me. Thank you for having me. Of course, so explain it to me in the most basic of terms. What exactly does your company do? Yeah, Fernride offers a solution for autonomous electric trucking. So why do we do this? We want to make our supply chains more resilient. So trucking, what is really the backbone of global trade, is facing major problems with, with the labor shortages. So alone in Europe, we have a shortage of 2 million truck drivers by 2026. And it's super important that when we have increasing volumes in transportation and fewer truck drivers, that we solve this issue, since otherwise those moments that everyone remember from COVID times when you enter a supermarket and there's empty supermarket shelves, this will become the new normal. And therefore, we decided, hey, let's face this problem and tackle it and offer a solution to overcome the truck driver shortage and also electrify uh, the, the trucking industry. And how we do this is that we actually start very pragmatic, since when you're speaking about autonomous vehicles, everyone thinks yeah, this is so far away, it's, it's a moonshot. There were so many promises and we want to be very pragmatic and offer a solution now. And what we did there is that we tackle use cases that work in constrained environments. So where you have a geofenced area, for example, in a port, so a, a container terminal where cargo is moved at relatively low speeds. And there's where autonomous driving works today. And this is what Fernrides USP is, that we combine in our approach to autonomy, we call this human-assisted autonomy. Really the best out of both worlds, so human intelligence and artificial intelligence in a hybrid setup. So how exactly does that work and who is the one controlling it or using it? Yeah, so when you imagine a truck driver today, we, we take that same person, bring it into an office location in that port, uh, let them remotely drive the vehicles and there's obviously not so much benefit when you just have it one-to-one -one bring the person from truck to an office but as our trucks are already driving 80 to 90 percent of the time autonomously uh, right now this person can manage today four trucks simultaneously and what they actually do is assisting in some planned maneuvers like precisely maneuvering the truck under a crane or when there is an edge case, uh, we had a re really random one in the last week where a seagull was uh, stopping in front of the truck and our truck is always programmed to not hit any obstacle, right? And therefore it stopped, then it called the remote operator sitting in that office for assistance. The operator connected with that vehicle, saw it's just a seagull, continue your mission vehicle and the, um, yeah, the vehicle continues its mission and thereby we achieve this productivity gain of one to four one operator controlling four trucks. Interesting. Now, I know you said it's in you know, a controlled location. Yeah. Is there ever a future in which you want to bring these out onto the roads? Yeah, so this is really step one of our journey. So we want to start where it's feasible today, where we can create value for our customers and then grow with that same customer base and with the same technology in more complex environments. For example, going into like the five kilometer routes around the sites where you connect highly repetitive routes between the port and warehouses. And yeah, this is then step two of our journey. And when, when we are allowed to really think big and achieving our vision is that we automate the physical world. So bringing automation wherever um, humans and machines can work hand, together, uh, hand in hand together. Now talk to me about the founding story. How did this all come about? Yeah. So Max, Michael and me, we met at university and both of them have um, PhDs in uh, the autonomous driving space. And we decided in 2019 that we spin off the technology from the Technical University of Munich. So we had already one cornerstone locked in that we use this kind of technology. And the second cornerstone was that we were very aligned of what kind of company we want to build. So we believe that there's an opportunity to build a generational technology company from Europe based on autonomous driving. So the open question was, hey, what kind of industry do we tackle? And then in 2020, uh, the, the COVID um, times hit every one of us and we experienced what it means when supply chains are broken. So we spent some time with trucking customers in the logistics industry. And yeah, we decided let's overcome those shortages of the trucking industry. It's really, really huge. It's the backbone of everything, but it's poised for disruption through autonomous driving and electrification. That's yeah, what we're doing now. Very cool. Now, I'm curious about the, the safety aspects and any legality you face of of this, how do you navigate the safety space and also 
legal barriers that you may face? Yeah, so on the regulatory question, is it legal to take out the, the driver out of a cabin in this kind of environment? Yes, so it's private grounds. This is one of the reasons why we decided for this use case where we start today on private geofenced areas, since you don't need to change any legislation. So that's one of the reasons. But also when you have an environment where you're not driving that fast, also what could go wrong is way more controlled and can be tackled with technology that is feasible today and you don't need to solve unsolved science problems that are maybe unsolved for some use cases on the open roads where you're driving 80 kilometers per hour, need to see very, very far into the future and even predict what everyone is doing around you. This is what we don't need for solving the challenges we have today for our customers. And speaking of customers, who are they? How many do you have? And what locations are you operating in? Yeah, so we, we, we started uh, three years ago when we brought the technology from the university into the trucking industry within geofenced areas. And there are basically three kind of use cases on distribution centers where you move trailers around warehouses. This is for DB Schenker, for example. Then we are moving cargo on big production facilities for Volkswagen, for example, and then containers on seaports, uh, and this is what we do for the port of Hamburg. Very cool. Tell me about your fundraising journey um, and what having this amount of capital has afforded you. Yeah, so we are a deep tech company, so we need a lot of funding to make this a reality, and we raised already our very first round uh, directly when we founded the company. So we founded the company 2019 in September, and even before actually founding the company, we had the first term sheets on the table from, from VCs. And uh, this money allows, allowed us then to, to bring the technology out of the lab into the real world and over the last years finding product market fit. Um, so really serving customers in a scalable way and now making this a reality takes, takes some money. It's not taking that money that like those AV companies were, were raising like billions, but we, we raised uh, 50 million our Series A last year and we will continue yeah, to raise money to build a generational technology from, uh, from, from Europe. That's awesome. Now there's, I think autonomous vehicles is a really popular space to be in right now. How do you set yourself apart from all the other companies out there doing very similar things that you are? Yeah, it comes down to our approach. Uh, so we started the company based on the hypothesis that you should not tackle this in a moonshot approach. So some companies directly went for the most difficult use cases in the most difficult environments, like robotaxis in inner urban traffic or trucking at high speeds. This is a really hard problem to solve. Why not solving a problem that you can address today with technology that works today? And this is what we then applied in the, the yard space. And the second thing that is very controversial, even more controversial five years ago, was that we don't believe in full autonomy. So we believe in this human-assisted way Right. where we have a lot of autonomy, 80%, 90%, maybe 95%, but keeping this human in the loop allows us, what is most important for our customers in logistics, to guarantee 100% reliability from day one. And this is then also key for scaling, since a customer that is then ordering 100 trucks and they are not reliable would be a mess for the entire supply chain. Absolutely. So going off that, how exactly are you using AI right now in your tech? Yeah. So for those 80, 90% um, autonomous features, um, you can basically use a very simple deterministic approach uh, when it comes to autonomous driving. So this is step one on the technology journey. But as we are collecting a lot of data in real life operations every single day in paid customer operations, we can collect the data and then apply machine learning to solve also the last five, six, seven, eight, nine percent we will never solve the, the last percent we, since we keep, think it's important to keep the human in, in the loop and um, yeah, build this, this fallback layer with, with, the, with the human. But um, this is where we apply AI, for example. We also apply it in other parts of the tech stack. For example, when you imagine connecting the vehicle uh, that is operating on a yard with an office, you need very good internet uh, connectivity. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of AI in making sure that this connection is super reliable, even without the need to have 5G. What would it take for you to sell your company? And is that your end goal? So I started the company with this clear vision of, of building a generational technology company. And like when, when we now sell 
after chapter one or chapter two of the story, this would not feel like the right thing to do. I, I really want to do this for the next 20, 30 years. And um, after solving autonomous driving for trucks in yards and then bringing it to the open roads, there's so many more challenges that, that our society has with um, yeah, the labor shortages that can be overcome with this kind of technology. And yeah, what we want to do is redefine the, the role of humans in a fully automated way. Is there one piece of advice that you would give your younger self the day before you started your company that you wish you knew now? I, I think what, what's, what's really important, um, especially when you're a young founder, is that you, that you build a skill to trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, I would give this advice to my, my younger self uh, to, to do this even earlier and more without the need to get a lot of data for every decision since then you can move way faster and uh, are not um, yeah, waiting too long for some decisions that might be difficult, but where you had already the right answer and the right decision very early on in the decision process. That's a great answer. Um, and final question for you. What would you like your legacy to be? Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I've not thought about this. So <laughs> I, I, I think a lot about what is important in the next 24 months uh, to um, deliver on, on the customer contracts we have and make them really, really happy. And also giving our team the resources, um, what, what they need to succeed and really empower everyone on this journey to, to get closer uh, to, to this end goal of, of building um, a, a company that can automate the physical world. Excellent. Well, Hendrik, thank you so much for sharing this with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.